When it comes to pretty much any Animal Crossing game, a lot of us work really hard on trying to keep our towns or islands perfectly upkept. We want things to look exactly the way that they're supposed to look, in the best way possible. But over the course of the entire Animal Crossing franchise, there's been several different aspects or mechanics that can cause your town or island to get really messed up. And while in a lot of instances, these things won't necessarily permanently ruin your town or island forever, it can definitely set you back quite a bit, making repairing or restoring your island a whole lot harder. Let's look at eight ways to completely ruin your Animal Crossing town or island. First, let's start off at just honing in on Animal Crossing Wild World for a minute. Now in general, across all the Animal Crossing games, there's various levels of consequences that can happen if you aggressively time travel in the game. But Wild World seems to just take things to a whole nother level for some reason. And even if you don't time travel, but you just take a break from the game, the consequences in this game were pretty aggressive, specifically when it comes to weeds. Yeah, historically speaking, Animal Crossing Wild World is the worst when it comes to absentee weeds starting to spawn in your town. If you take even a couple of weeks off, you'll come back to find that there are weeds literally cluttering your town from one end all the way to the other. Like, an absurd amount. Sure, this is something that has existed in every Animal Crossing game and to different levels of extremes, but even the GameCube version did have the weeds popping in nearly as much as Wild World. Tie this to the fact that Wild World was known for having some really easy time travel glitches to make a ton of bells meant that time traveling became much more tempting to players who didn't want to live out that grind and the consequences of getting a lot of bells very quickly was your town was now infested with weeds and cleaning up the weeds wasn't a simple task back in Wild World. It wasn't something you just run through your town in 30 minutes and get all of the weeds. There were so many of them just packed into the small space that is your town and you would have to spend upwards of two maybe even three hours just constantly only picking weeds if you wanted to clean up your town after doing some aggressive time traveling. Fortunately, while the weed mechanic would stay in the game for all future releases of Animal Crossing, things did get a little bit easier down the road. By the time Animal Crossing New Leaf came up, if you had the beautiful town ordinance in place, you wouldn't get any weeds while time traveling or from taking a break. But in the original Animal Crossing game, Wisp would actually help you weed your town, which is much more helpful than anything Wisp does in New Horizons. On the flip side of things though, in Animal Crossing New Horizons, if you go and talk to Leaf over on Harv's Island, he does offer a service where he will come and weed your entire island for you. It costs a steep 100,000 bells, but honestly, these weeds can be really annoying. And if the price is right and you really don't want to pick the weeds yourself, there are options out there for you. Also in Animal Crossing Wild World and City Folk, another repercussion of time traveling was the possibility that Tom Nook's store would downgrade to the older version of the store, something that didn't come back in later iterations of Animal Crossing games, but it is still something kind of interesting. So after a little bit of time traveling or a long break in Animal Crossing, you could come back to find your town just ruined with weeds and even Tom Nook's store is regressed back to what it once was. But if we're going to talk about penalties for not playing Animal Crossing, why don't we talk about a penalty for playing Animal Crossing? And while we've briefly touched on this in the past, Let's look at this a little more in detail because it is a little bit wild. Animal Crossing Grass Deterioration. Now this was introduced in Animal Crossing City Folk, though it was also continued on in Animal Crossing New Leaf, but to a lesser extreme. So we'll focus a bit more on the City Folk version. So Animal Crossing City Folk released on the Wii and all of a sudden Animal Crossing had more power. They had the ability to add in new features that would make the game feel more alive than ever. And I guess the the idea was over time the pathways that players typically would walk or run when playing their game would have the grass deteriorate so you would have all of these pathways that were the main way that players would walk. On paper this sounds like a cool idea to have these little trails in everyone's town that make it feel like a lived in town that's completely unique to the player. However I don't think Nintendo fully accounted for the play style of Animal Crossing players because if you are like me, you run from one end of your town to the other, you go up, down, left, right, you are grabbing fruit from every tree, shaking everything, digging holes everywhere, and very quickly it started to become obvious amongst the Animal Crossing fan 
enemies that if you played the game normally and ran around and walked around, you would be penalized with grass deterioration literally everywhere. <laughs> There was no limit to how quickly your grass could fade away, which in turn made it so many players were essentially living in a barren wasteland of a town rather than the nice little animal forest village that most people had grown to love from the franchise. Now, Animal Crossing New Leaf would still have grass deterioration in the game. However, it was not nearly as aggressive and the time it would take for the grass to grow back wasn't as bad. It still was kind of a Annoying, and it was still something that a lot of people had to think about and be kind of cautious about mechanic wise but geez was city folk really the worst version of this it's really no surprise that when Animal Crossing New Horizons came out they finally ditched the idea of grass deterioration altogether and instead just let players eventually get terraforming and just put their own pathways down which is probably preferable than trying to repair grass because you dared to shake a tree one too many times okay switching here's this next one. Animal Crossing New Leaf is honestly loved by the fan base. It's often toted as a top tier Animal Crossing game and honestly rightfully so. It got a lot of things right. However, there were still a few little newer mechanics that weren't fully fleshed out or thought about in regards to how they worked. For instance, some of you may remember Animal Crossing New Leaf's plot of land mechanic. Just the whole way that the system worked. It was cool. It was innovative, but man, it could have been done maybe a a little bit better. Firstly, in Animal Crossing New Leaf, you get to actually pick where you want your tent and eventual house to be. And you have to choose wisely because this is going to be the location of your home and it's going to be a major point of your town. However, if you decide to let someone else move into your town, you better be looking over their shoulder on where they pick to put their tent because they can literally just put their tent right in front of your tent. I've had this happen to me before. And then all of a sudden, your little area that was going to be your perfect yard and maybe your gonna have a little pathway or something is just interrupted by another tent literally front of your house okay maybe not everyone had to deal with this but there was really no way you could fix this it wasn't like there was a simple move your house feature like what animal crossing new horizons had so your options were to delete the person's house altogether or force them to move to a different game cartridge or something like that it's not very realistic but there's a whole nother element to this also as you had limited control over where new villagers would move in in your town town as well back in the New Leaf days and I know for a fact a lot of people really didn't like it when a villager would do the same thing and just plop their house right in front of your own house. Now there were videos and tutorials and systems in place where you could do a little bit of soft resetting to try to manipulate where a villager would end up taking a plot of land for their house but it was pretty tedious and it involved a lot of resetting and work to get it just right but yeah it seemed like a really devastating effect to have happen for a game that typically lets you completely manipulate and choose how your town looks, what your town does, especially in a game where you're the mayor. So at least there were workarounds, but yeah, it was a little bit frustrating. New Horizons mitigated a lot of the struggle with that by just letting you pick where the plots of land were and you could move plots of land freely, which was really cool. Now let's shift gears and look at Animal Crossing New Horizons for a little bit, because this is one that kind of hit a little too close to home for us, but another one where the game kind of penalizes you for playing the game too much and we're talking about overloaded islands. Now both my wife and I play this game quite a bit and we both like the idea of having packed full islands with just a ton of stuff on display. I'm going for this city aesthetic still and on my wife's island she's going for more of this sightseeing attraction type feeling where you run through and there's different themes to every area. There's these huge flower gardens but essentially every single section of the island has something unique or a unique story in one way or another. There's some sort of weird lab going on with a money exchange over here. Or if you look over here, it's the Last Supper. <laughs> there's Christmas, there's Halloween, there's Mario. However, the frustrating thing is keeping the five stars on your island when you go for a more abstract theme like this. Now, fortunately, my wife went through painstakingly making sure that every time she filled an area, her island would remain five stars. But even then, still with this island being five stars, 
there are a few nuanced things that kind of penalize players for playing in this style of trying to fill every space on their island. And we're not just talking about the frame rate dips that we both get on our islands. Sure, certain things become a little bit less frequently available, like shooting things out of the sky or finding fossils to dig up, but when your museum's already done, it's really not that big of a deal. But if you just slightly move one item, it can cause the entire island to lose its rating from five stars to four stars. I made a joke about this in one of our early videos here on this channel. This is an island that is technically rated four stars. However, if you move this one block one place over, boom, the island's now five stars. And there were so many comments of people trying to figure out what the difference was in that little clip that made a difference between a four star and a five star island. And it was literally this one block was moved half a square. That was the difference that we had run into. And since Animal Crossing New Horizons is my wife's first ever Animal Crossing game, it was a really big deal when her island hit five stars. I remember waking up in the other room to a text message of a picture on my phone of the five star rating from Isabel. So that being such an important accomplishment and achievement in the history of this island, it was pretty heartbreaking for my wife when for whatever reason, her island dropped to four stars and we couldn't figure out what the problem was. Eventually, I just happened to be checking every single entrance to make sure it wasn't something random. And yeah, it was this one block that got moved half a space over. It's not like the entranceway was actually blocked off where you couldn't get into the store. I would understand that. So I don't know. There's been criticisms across the board from various people in the Animal Crossing community who have run into similar issues where all of a sudden their island just gets demoted in a star ranking for some very nuanced or random thing. And for some people, it's a really, really big deal. So I'm counting this one on the list. I don't know if you guys can relate to this, but if you can, let me know in the comments down below or if you think that the star rating should just be thrown out altogether. Okay. Okay, so this next one is one that has plagued a lot of people's save files in Animal Crossing Wild World, City Folk, and even New Leaf. If you've taken some time off and maybe let some weeds get out of hand on your town, one of these may spawn in, known as a Rafelsia. And oh boy, are these things very, very frustrating and really can just be a little bit demotivating if you're playing Animal Crossing. These essentially are the ultimate punishment for letting your weeds get out of hand and essentially spawn in and there's really not much you can do other than try to fix your island at this point to get rid of the flower. Not only does this flower kind of look gross, it also can attract insects into the area, which hey, I mean, that could be a good thing, I guess, if you're trying to catch flies or something for your museum. But other than that, there's really not much you can do other than clean up your island. Finally, a shovel won't lift it. You have to get your town under control. Now, these things will only spawn in if your town is rated the lowest possible rating it can get and obviously this is kind of the icing on the cake to that and even the people in the post office will comment about these darn flowers that keep popping up and smell really bad. Now if you do clean up your town the Rafelsia will eventually wilt and start to die away however the fact that it doesn't just go away after one day of really tough cleaning is another reason why we wanted to include this on the list. It's something that latches on and sticks around for a while and takes a lot of dedication to even get this this thing off of your town. It kind of becomes an extra chore as a punishment for not playing and keeping your town up to the beautiful standards that your town deserves. And while you can fix it, the fact that you can't just instantly get rid of it was one of the reasons we thought it deserved to be on this list. Okay, let's shift gears and look at Animal Crossing City Folk because City Folk was such an interesting time for Animal Crossing. It was after the era of Wild World that introduced Animal Crossing fans to the online connectivity, but City Folk, I don't know what it was. Maybe it was the fact that the Wii was really susceptible to really easy to do modding that didn't require any purchases of like an action replay ahead of time. But there were a lot of people who would mod back in the day Animal Crossing City Folk and give themselves some hacks here or there that could give them an advantage. Now that's all good and all. However, back in the City Folk days, if you just let anyone show up to your town, which was really easy with the use of message boards online, you could just send out your friend code, add some people who message you back and they could come check out your town, maybe trade some fruit. But these people, 
people who had the hacks available could take things a step further and completely, literally ruin your town. Not only could they use their hacks to just do whatever they want in your town, they could even go inside of your house and just start picking up items and keeping them, just stealing them right out of your house. And there really wasn't anything you could do other than watch. You could try to quickly disconnect your internet altogether if you're fast enough, but if you try to just force close out, the game will end up saving and all of your lost stuff will be gone for good. I think that this actually ended up becoming such a problem in City Folk that by the time New Leaf came out and especially New Horizons, they really cracked down with what abilities players can have when playing Animal Crossing. And of course, Nintendo has made efforts to make the game non-moddable. That hasn't really stopped that many people, but at least there are options Nintendo has like banning accounts and whatnot from online play that has kind of at least given players an incentive not to just straight up grief other players, towns and islands. You don't hear too, too often of people coming in with modded switches, stealing people's stuff, because at that point they could just mod the stuff in themselves. However, when it still was a little more primitive back in the Wii days, this was a huge way that a lot of people had their entire games ruined just because one modder who figured out how to pick up items using some sort of code was able to come and catalog and also bring back items with them straight from your own town. Shifting gears to Animal Crossing New Horizons again, similarly to this issue of modding your town or island in one way or another. Typically speaking, I don't think there's too much of a problem if you have Animal Crossing and you choose to mod your game on your own time. There was like some massive controversy on things like trees that had stars modded into them in Animal Crossing New Horizons. Some people got way too upset over it, but one thing that did end up happening was Nintendo started cracking down on some of these islands that had modified items, specifically trees that had different items in them, and did start banning at least the dream codes of some of these islands so other players wouldn't be able to come and visit upon typing in the code. I don't really know the logistics of how Nintendo deals with bans when it comes to Animal Crossing. I don't know if it's easy to get your stuff unbanned, but Nintendo has always had a reputation of just kind of cracking the whip randomly on certain things, and apparently they're not too happy when it comes to people modding their Animal Crossing island. Now, there are some people who play it really safe and they find ways to mod and typically not go online also to make sure they can't get any of the repercussions from Nintendo. And I do think Nintendo might be being a little too harsh on that type of stuff, but ultimately, I guess you're not playing the game the way it's intended. So if they want to completely block off your island from the rest of the world and ruin that aspect of the game, I guess it's their prerogative, but I'm still not too sure I'm sold on that idea just yet. I'd be curious to see what you guys think in the comments down below. Do you think people who modify their game for certain aesthetic purposes should have their stuff banned from Nintendo servers? Let us know what you think in the comments down below. And then lastly, I wasn't really sure if this one would count for the video, but I still wanted to include it briefly because it kind of should count. But Animal Crossing Villagers moving out. Now, in New Horizons, they definitely streamlined the whole moving in and moving out process to a very easy to understand system. If a villager's thinking about moving out, you have the option to talk to them and encourage them or make them want to stay. However, in all the previous games before New Horizons, you could lose your favorite villager just because of the randomness of the mechanic that was hard to understand. Now, the first three Animal Crossing games, the GameCube one, the DS one, and the Wii one, you really didn't have too much notice if someone was going to move away. Sometimes they would just send you a letter and boom, they were gone. They already were gone by the time you even knew they were thinking of moving away. So you could just lose your favorite villager just like that. New Leaf got a little bit better at predicting things. Sometimes a villager would give you a heads up that they were thinking about moving and you would have time to try to encourage them. Sometimes they wouldn't move after thinking about moving, whether you encouraged them or not, which could be kind of a big misdirection if you hated a certain villager. New Leaf was really confusing when it came to that, but it still wasn't a solid method because you really were out of control as to whether or not ultimately a villager would choose to move out or not. Like I said, I wasn't too sure if this one should be counted, but I feel like for a lot of people, having the perfect squad of villagers is a big part of the game to them, so maybe this one should count as well. So guys, what did you think of this video? Did you enjoy it? If so, make sure you subscribe with notifications on. For more Animal Crossing content just like this, we have some big things coming up in the works, a little bit of bigger Animal Crossing projects. So if you've liked anything we've done here, I'm working hard on some longer videos even. So be on the lookout for that. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for all of the support as we've only started this more recently, but otherwise we'll just keep going with it and we'll see you next time with a brand new video.